The inventory levels pulled back, but that was to be expected. Get ready for a big run in inventory levels. Buyers get ready for some hidden opportunities in the marketplace. Also, the Fed and the Treasury are competing forces. The losers are going to be, well, us and inflation. Meanwhile, rents are down in some markets, but there's an 8 million X factor that's going to crush housing affordability even more in the next couple of years. In this video, we're going to go over the single family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. And we're also going to do a quick interest rate update and talk about some relevant current events. Hi, it's Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then no, I'm here to help. Don't want to pay two and a half percent of the purchase price when buying a new house? I get it. Then take a look at our purchase power plan. In this plan, buyers can pay for our services by the hour instead of the two and a half or three percent of the purchase price. This can save home buyers possibly tens of thousands of dollars. Reach out if you're looking to buy a house and want to save a small fortune in fees. Let's jump into the single family market stats. Inventory pulled back, like we said. Well, we knew that was going to happen. Now it's time to start thinking about how big the inventory run is going to be and how high the inventory peak in 2024 is going to be. My guess is that we'll flirt with the 5,500 units on the market level, but we're probably not going to break through it. We now have 4,171 single family houses on the market in the state of Massachusetts. This is 11.8% more than the houses on the market just 28 days ago. Inventory might have pulled back, but the inventory gap, that didn't. We now have 773 more houses on the market when compared to the same week last year at 625 more houses on the market when compared to the same time back in 2022. New listings plummeted, but we knew that was going to happen. It was Memorial Day weekend. This week, we listed 742 single family houses in the state of Massachusetts. This is 50 units or 7.2% more than the same week back in 2023. Next week, be ready because new listings are going to come in big numbers. Buyers, get ready. Meanwhile, that four-week rolling average is 1,344 units. This week, we put 1,145 single-family houses under agreement. Now, this is 54 units or 5% higher than the same week last year when we put 1,091 single-family homes under agreement. This under agreement number will be down next week. Just be ready for it. It's not anything to worry about. That full week rolling average is 1,077 units. So when compared to last year's market, new listings, they were up by 7.2%, while under agreements, they were up by 5%. The pending to new listings ratio was 71.5%. We have 1,145 units that went under agreement this week, which is compared to the 1,601 new listings that came on the market two weeks ago. Ouch. This is compared to the 81.6% that we saw this week last year. The average for the last four weeks is 84.3% compared to the weeks five through eight of 99.5%. There were 567 single family homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $854,000 and a median sales price of $663,000. Sales levels compared to the same week last year were down by two units or 0.4% as there were 569 single family homes it sold this week last year for an average sale price of $808,000. Months of inventory, this is how we determine what type of market we're in. Zero to five months, that's considered a seller's market. With the closer that you can get to zero, the more aggressive and the stronger the seller's market that it is. This week, months of inventory fell to 2.06 months from last week's 2.36 months. The 2.06 months this week is compared to the 1.71 months this week last year. And that's going to go up next week, so just be prepared. Real quick, it's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a home, then it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now onto the condo market. Like the single family market, as expected, the condo market was down this week. We have 2,526 condos on the market as of Monday. Now this means that there is 3.1% more inventory on the market today than the inventory levels of just 28 days ago. So not a huge difference there, but it's because the pullback of Memorial Day weekend. Inventory was down, but the inventory gap, that grew. We now have 398 more units on the market today than compared to today last year. 403 more units than compared to the inventory levels of 2022, and now 79 units higher than when compared to the inventory levels of 2021. There were 256 condos that came on the market last week with that four-week rolling average of 594 units. The 256 units was 11 units or 4.1% less than the 267 condos that came on the market this same week back in 2023. Again, this was to be expected as it was Memorial Day weekend. This week, we put 427 units under agreement. Now, this 427 sales 
was five units or 1.2% less than last year when we put 432 condos under agreement. That four week rolling average for under agreements is 479 units. So 4.1% fewer listings they came on the market when compared to this week last year while selling 1.2% fewer condos. The condo to pending new listing ratio was 67.7%. And I thought the single family number was bad. This is compared to the 70.1% that we saw this time last year. Now the average for the last four weeks is 80.3%, which is compared to 87% for weeks five through eight. There were 242 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $666,000 and a median sales price of $558,000. This same week last year, there were 296 condos that sold. So sales levels were down by 18.2%. Months of inventory, that made a big drop to 2.52 months from last week's 2.84 months. And this is compared to the months of inventory levels of 2.15 months this week last year. Months of inventory is down in the single family and condo market, but it will shoot back up next week. Any chance you could do me a huge favor, can you hit that like button? It's right down there. Believe it or not, it just makes a huge difference for me as well as the channels. It just plays with that YouTube algorithm. Well, subscribing, if you haven't done that and you're enjoying the content, that one doesn't hurt either. So please consider subscribing. Time to talk about interest rates. When it comes to interest rates, this week's gains were not exactly what we wanted, but it could be worse. Rates are down by nearly a quarter of a point in the last month. While we didn't really have any economic data to move the needle in the last week, we did have some Fed speeches. These speeches helped the market well reiterate what they already knew. And the big development in my mind is that the market is now only pricing in one rate cut for the year. But does it really matter? When the Fed cuts rates, they are doing what is called quantitative easing. When they are raising rates, then they're doing what's called quantitative tightening. So can the Fed tighten while the Treasury essentially steps on their feet and floods the market with liquidity? Yeah, that's exactly what's going on right now. And why what the Fed is doing, it's not working. Why inflation, it's here to stay. And again, inflation also includes home prices. So the Fed has raised interest rates to make loans less attractive and ultimately bring inflation down. But the Treasury is up to no good by artificially stimulating the economy through their Treasury buyback program. This is where the treasurer repurchases its own outstanding securities from the open market in order to increase liquidity, stoke demand, and bring down yields. Do you know who wins with this type of policy? I can assure you that it's not you and me or anyone else on Main Street. And it's not a small amount of money either. Take a look at this chart. Two billion here, two billion there, 500 million here, another two billion there. I mean, this is why the Fed hasn't really been successful. It's stopping out inflation. So how does the treasury buy these securities? The treasury does this by buying its own securities and then issuing new debt. It essentially creates this debt out of thin air using money that the treasury printed. So I say this and point this out to show why the Fed hasn't been able to cut and well, can't cut. I am believing more and more that there will be no cuts this year. If the Fed lowered rates right now, the result of simultaneously expansionary monetary and fiscal policy will send consumer prices soaring. Inflation is here to stay and inflation is bound to get higher, which means housing costs for the long term will continue to get higher. So rents are on the decline in some markets around the United States, though, but don't worry, not here in Boston. Multifamily rents in April dropped by 0.8% compared to the same month last year. Now, the decline was triggered by a significant influx of new rental units hitting the market. This is surprising, as this is generally the time of year when we actually see rental rates on the rise. A report by apartment list is apartment vacancies reaching a peak that has not been seen since August of 2020, climbing to 6.7% as of March. But single-family rents are a different story. Rents increased 3.4% in March year over year. This is the bad news, but the good news is that the growth rate is gradually decreasing as built-for-rent companies continue to add more supply to the marketplace. According to the National Association of Home Builders, construction began on approximately 18,000 single-family homes designed for rent in the first quarter of 2024. This is up 20% from the first quarter of 2023. And over the past year, that is 80,000 such homes that have started construction, marking nearly a 16% increase from the previous year. This was pretty shocking to me. This is a lot of the supply that isn't making it to the market for homeowners to buy. There is little doubt in my mind that this supply being diverted to the rental market is affecting our housing pricing. In the nation's 20 largest cities, Seattle reported the highest annual increase in single-family rents 
at 6.3%, followed by New York at 5.3%, and then Boston at 5.2%. The cities that saw declines were Austin, Texas at 3.5%, Miami at 3.2%, and New Orleans at 1.4% decline. But I've said it once, and I'm going to end up saying it a lot more. Home prices and rental rates are on the rise. This article's headline says it all. Eventually, they will be competing in the private market. It's safe to say that those 80,000 new construction rental single-family units will not meet the surge of demand. You're probably thinking, well, multi-family units, they're going to make up that difference. <laughs> not so fast and not so much. Since late 2022, multi-family construction has fallen by about 50%. The long-term prospects for housing prices, it doesn't look good. For people on the sidelines, that is. Prices are going to go up and up. Demand is far outstripping supply. Don't wait. I remember all the people saying that they're going to wait and sit on the sidelines 2019 and 2020. Fortunes have been lost because of the mindset of trying to time a market perfectly. Let's talk about your own personal real estate needs again. It's Jeff Chubb. Whether you're looking to buy or sell a home in the next 9 or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out more about your real estate goals. And if you know of anyone that's thinking about buying or selling a house, then it would be a true pleasure it, to help them. And I truly appreciate you passing along my contact information. You can visit youtuberealestateagent.com or find all my contact information in the description below right down there. Until next time.